So in the case of an anterior nominate, we're going to say that Dr. Seals has a left anterior nominate. Um, then what we want to do is we want to take the nominate and rotate it posteriorly because it's direct. We want to go into the barrier. And so when we bring the knee up towards the chest, um, when you do that motion, the first thing that happens is that the femur is going to ro rotate in the acetabulum. As you start to bend, um, the femur is going to run out of room, and then at that point, the ilium is going to rotate posteriorly. This is the part where we want. And then if we just continue pushing forward, his ilium is going to run out of room, and then his sacrum and lumbar spine is going to start to flex in place. So we don't want to go as far as his knee will allow, because that's going to take us past um, the point of where we want to be. And so instead, what we need to do is have a hand on the ilium right here, so my hand is just flat against his iliac crest on this side. And so we're going to um, bring his knee up just until right here where we start to feel the ilium starting to rotate posteriorly. Um, and so right where we feel that motion, that ilium motion, is where we're going to stop the, the knee. And then from here we're going to have him engage his hamstrings to engage and, and do uh, our muscle energy treatment. Um, you can do it how I have it with the knee bent like this, but if the patient has knee problems, this might potentially be um, irritating for them, in which case it's, it's acceptable as well to come underneath the knee like this. And so from here, we are at the barrier, we're gonna have the patient push his knee straight down into me. And then relax after three to five seconds, and then we're gonna take him a little bit forward into his knee barrier, so I'm, I'm pushing him until I feel that ilium starting to rotate again, and then push into me. And relax. I'm gonna move him into his barrier again. Go ahead and push. And relax. After that, we're gonna do our final stretch. And then at this point, we would take him back to position. We would reassess with the compression test. We would check all our various landmarks, leg landmarks. Uh, but we're going to um, skip on reassessment for now, uh, just for the sake of the video. If Dr. Steele's had a posterior nominate, so his, uh, his nominate was rotated posteriorly this way, then we would need to treat him by bringing the nominate forward this way. We can do this one of two ways. Um, the one way is to do it with him in the supine position. So I can ask him, can you slide towards me a little bit? So in this position, um, we can let his knee drop off the table on this side. We want to be careful to make sure that he's securely on the table. Right? So if the patient um, is not secure in some way, you may ask them to hold on to the table over here to hold themselves on, or you may need to keep a hand on them uh, to keep them stabilized on the table. But for this purpose, he's relatively secure on the table. Again, I'm going to keep a hand on his uh, nominate to make sure that I'm allowing his hip to extend just until we start to feel the ilium start to, to pull forward. And then from this position here, I'm going to have him lift his knee up towards the ceiling. As he lifts up, he's going to engage his iliacus muscle as well as his quadriceps going to pull that nominate back into position. Okay, push up again. And relax. Okay, I'm going to go a little bit further into the barrier. Push up again. And relax. Do a final stretch and then bring this back up. We would want to reposition him on the table uh, before we do our reassessment. The other way to do that technique would be in the prone position. So if can I have from this position, uh, we would do uh, a similar situation in terms of trying to create hip extension. Uh, for our argument's sake, we'll say that he has a right-sided posterior nominate. Uh, in this case, we would bend the knee like this, support the knee under our body here. We would still keep a hand on the ilium, and so that as we pull his hip up into extension, we want to feel the ilium starting to rotate back into position. And then we would have him push his knee down into the table to engage that iliacus and quadriceps muscle groups. And just like before, he would contract and relax, and we would bring his knee progressively upwards towards the ceiling 
in order to correct that posterior anomaly. Can I have you flip over to the supination? In the case of uh, flares, so if he has an in flare or an out flare, we're going to treat those um, using a direct action muscle energy. So if he has an in flare of the anominates with the uh, P ASIS being medial and the PSIS being lateral. We're going to bring the knee up and then we're going to let the knee fall out to the side. In this particular position, we don't really worry so much about um, isolating, so we don't have to have a hand on this side of the pelvis um, because by pushing on the femur as he engages um, his musculature, his only option is to correct his um, somatic dysfunction of the anomalies. So from here, we would have the patient push up towards the ceiling. As he pushes up with his knee, he's engaging his adductor complex, which is going to pull uh, on the pubic symphysis and try to pull the ilium laterally. And then he would relax, and then we would go further into the barrier, three to five cycles, three to five seconds, relax. And we would reposition. In the case of an outflare, in the case of an outflare, we would want to do the opposite. So we would want to have the knee come across. Here it is important because when we learn about piriformis musculature, this is how we would do muscle energy for the piriformis muscle. To make it treatment for an outflare, our hand underneath needs to hook under the PSIS. And we're going to have him push out with his knee. As he pushes out, he's going to engage um, his glute medius muscles and also his tensor fascia lata and the other um, external rotators of the hip. Um, and as he pushes out with the knee, we're going to pull laterally on the posterior ilium, which is going to induce that inflare motion that we're trying to achieve. So we're going to hook underneath here, and I'm going to say push with the knee. As he pushes, I'm going to pull, and then relax, and as he relaxes, I'm going to let the knee sink, and I'm going to let the ilium come laterally this way, okay, push again, and as he pushes, I'm going to pull to resist that force, and then relax, as he relaxes, we're going to pull again, just like we did before. In the case of a shear, in a shear, the entire anominate is either shifted um, superiorly or inferiorly. We're going to treat those largely in the same manner uh, by grabbing a hold of the leg that is short and pulling downward traction on it. So in the case of an, a superior shear on his uh, left side, that would mean that his entire left leg is short, the ilium is displaced superiorly. Um, In this case, this leg is a little bit short, so what we're going to do is um, stabilize his uh, other side, his right leg. We're going to grab a hold of the lower extremity. We're going to internally rotate so that we close, close off the hip joint so that when we traction, we will be tractioning on the nominate, not the hip joint. So from here, we're going to apply a little bit of traction here with just this leg, and then we're going to use respiratory assist. So I'm going to have you take a deep breath in, and as he breathes out, we're going to traction a little bit, and then breathe in, breathe out, and traction a little bit further, breathe in, and breathe out. Now in the case of respiratory assist muscle energy, we would increase that to five to seven cycles of breathing rather than the three to five that we would typically do for um, a muscle engagement type of muscle energy. In the case of a, a uh, inferior shear where the leg is longer, we would repeat the same technique except we would do it with the opposite leg. So if we had a situation where he had a um, inferior shear on this right side, this whole right leg is long, the um, pelvis is deviated downward, we would block over here and we would close off this joint, we would apply a little bit of traction, we would have him breathe. And as he breathes, we're gonna pull down onto this leg, which is the shorter leg. We're also gonna lean into him a little bit on the 
long legs to try to drive this, this pelvis um, superiorly. So breathe in and out. As he breathes out, we're going to pull. Breathe in and out. And again, you would do five to seven cycles of breathing to uh, correct using respiratory assist.